All right, everybody, welcome to another Insurance 360 podcast. We're Rob. cranking these out, man. Oh, my gosh. Every week, we're keeping it consistent. <laughs> we're doing a lot of stuff. But not Keep like, forgetting to cheers you. There not like go. anything's going on. We, we are going to start drinking a little something, a little bit more than water at some point. We're going to closer <laughs> to AEP. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to need some whiskey soon, as soon as it hits October yeah. 1st. No, 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 <laughs> doubt about, no doubt about that. Well, we are really um, excited about this episode. We've been doing so much stuff, I feel like, on final rule and the government, all that kind of exciting stuff, right? Talking about regulations is is just... uh, It's fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I I enjoy it uh, exponentially so. Yeah. So now that we have some clarification, maybe we can do some fun stuff, like maybe grow our business and and help agents grow their business. Maybe get some new leads? Uh, I don't know. I think we got some cool stuff today and we... um, we are so excited to have with us on the podcast today, Jen DeBure from Leading Response. Jen, welcome to uh, Insurance 360. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Probably Florida there. I'm sure it's nice and sunny. And uh, I know you do a ton of travel. So you're back at home base today. I'm recording here from home base at my home office today. And here in sunny Florida, it's a bazillion degrees. So just to keep anyone <laughs> curious, it's wildly hot. A lot of you may have seen Leading Response and, and some of the stuff that they're doing. And, and maybe you even, even know Jen. Jen and Pinnacle, we go back quite a way. So I do want to um, talk about the fact that Pinnacle and Leading Response really sort of pioneered seminar selling for Medicare in a, in a way going back a couple a couple of years now. So Jen, what was it? 2021. It was post COVID. You and I were at a, a cool event being held, and I think I think we talked about the fact that we didn't know we should shake hands at the time. We were like <laughs> we were like elbow bumping or something, um, and then we sort of got into a conversation about about seminar selling. Do you remember this? Oh, absolutely. It was so weird, right? It was. I think for all of us, it was like our first big conference back and no one knew what to do. And some right. people were masked and some people weren't. And we're like, do we shake hands? Do we not shake hands? And like, it was really lightly attended. So what we ended up doing is just hanging out right. with other vendors. Yeah. And what I ended up doing was just Yeah, no, we, had a, we had a blast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just nice to be out amongst our people. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it was like, oh my gosh, we're out. Uh, I, got to, I got to fly somewhere. You know, <laughs> this was... It was very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, being that, <laughs> that that you and, and leading response at this point are pretty much the preeminent um, vendor for seminar selling. And and I will just say, and, and I think we'll have a chance to touch on this a little bit. because I don't know if everybody realizes it. It's not just Medicare. I mean, you guys do a little bit of everything. So our annuity agents do some of this stuff on the wealth side, for example, social security meeting. So I, I think it's a good idea. Maybe we touch on a little bit of everything, but for sure, the fact that we're coming to AEP, we got a lot to talk about um, with with everything, how to prepare and what we should be probably doing now that we know we can actually market this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. And look, with the seminar selling, it's different because, you know, there's a crackdown yes. with a lot of the leads going forward with all of the new disclaimers that you need to have on there. Right. So I think the seminar selling is going to really continue to grow and get bigger and bigger. And we're really excited to have you on, Jen. Yeah. Jen, what are you what are you seeing about the FCC? I mean, is this impacting you, this this one to one consent or any of this? I mean, with what you're doing, it probably is not as big of an impact, right? It's really no impact to us because we were never doing leads. We were never doing one to multiple. Every single campaign that we ever do is for a particular agent or a particular group of agents, right? So it's their name is on that invitation. Their name is on that ad. If we're using Facebook, it's always been one to one. So this whole FCC thing that's going on, I mean, while it's disruptive to other organizations, not disruptive to us in the least. I don't know if everybody realizes, but today is August 1st. So I don't know where the summer's gone, but um, I know, right? I think we need to, I think we definitely need to talk a little bit about um, what agents need to be doing right now, because um, let's talk a little bit about best practices when we're doing seminars. We, and talk about a little bit of the lead time, because obviously the process is you guys need to get the butts in the seats, right? So how long does it take to do that? So we want to start doing seminars, what, September probably at this point. So if we're talking four weeks out, we should start 
really getting that stuff together as an as an agent um, soon. Would you agree? Absolutely. But let's back up just a little bit to like what you mentioned previously about the industries that we're in. So what I think what a lot of people don't know about us is that we've actually been in business for 29 years. I have been with Leading Response now um, August 4th. So in a few days will be my 21st anniversary with the company. Wow. And okay. we, started, <laughs> we started in financial services. We're still in financial services. We're generally credited as the people who created the dinner seminar. That idea was born with us and our company founder. And it's what we've been doing. And what we found over the years as we were working is that this didn't just work in financial. It still very much does. And so we can definitely talk about how it helps your annuity agents and all of those. Because I think when people think of our relationship with Pinnacle, we're thinking just Medicare, right? But we can absolutely help in the financial. And it's something that we're doing all the time. And then we work in all these other industries as well. I'm the VP of sales of what we call a health and legacy which is really anything that's not financial services. So that includes our Medicare, our value-based care providers, senior living, estate planning, all sorts of things where seminars still work. That's great. Yeah, with the value-based care, um, th that's such a, a growing segment. Yes. Um, I think the government really made some changes with the star rating calculations. We've seen the carriers are just jumping all over the, yeah. the value-based care uh, model. So I think that is is definitely something more agents should take a look at. Um, is, is that something, same type of lead time, you know, same type of um, presentations you're seeing? Uh, are we having the same type of um, outcomes from the value-based care? Absolutely. So here's what we should tell our agents to do is that they should talk to their local value-based care providers that are in their area and tell them that they want to do events with leading response. If it's one of the big ones, they very well likely know us. They could be a partner at this point in time. And they're willing to pay, in many cases, a portion of it. I often see the value-based care providers willing to pay for all of the events. They just want, they want, everyone has the same goal. Their goal is to bring more people into their provider practice that are Medicare eligible and what better way for them to do that than to host a Medicare seminar and help someone host a Medicare seminar. And it doesn't even have to be at their, you know, a lot of them have their own internal community centers, but we've learned that those don't work as well as the restaurants do. So as we get into that conversation about best practices, even the value-based care providers with their community centers know that the restaurants do better and are fine with that. Yeah, at the end of the day, no, that that makes sense. Yeah, you know, the more people you can get in front of, um, the opportunity um, is there uh, for sure. And yeah. the value based care is growing left and right. I know here in in our office, we've got several strong relationships. Um, as an agent, um, if you're not already taking advantage of that, you definitely need to. Oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's that's the future. I mean, value-based care, right? I, you know, I talk about this a lot on, on the webinars I do, but you know, we've we've gone, we've come a long way, right? Because a lot of time we were doing reactive medicine, and now we're doing a lot of proactive, right? It's trying to prevent the cancer or stop it before it even gets to stage four, and you know, I think the value-based care model is is really helping with that. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is growing in leaps and bounds. And then on the on the wealth side of things, I think this is. Um, something uh, again uh it's just another way to get in front of people all year round I, I know a lot of us in the medicare world spend so much in resources during aep i know you guys jen are probably um <laughs> going crazy during this time of year uh but there's so much more and other things that you can be doing throughout the year um like the social security seminar for example right so I think for anyone who is focusing on annuities, the natural conversation with that is Social Security. Um, the little twist that I love is Social Security for women. I'm a big, big proponent of that. And I'm happy to have that conversation with anyone. Um, you just mark it to the woman's name. And women have been so neglected in financial conversations for so long. Uh, the men still come. It's just the room. You just mark it to her instead of to the men's name. But either way, Social Security or Social Security for women naturally leads to an annuity conversation because it's about your retirement income. So what someone needs to look at is when they take their social security benefit, 
how much of that is going to get them to their income needs and then what they're going to need to get them the rest of the way. And that is the annuity half of the conversation to make sure that they have the income that they need for the rest of their life and that they don't outlive their assets. So, yeah, it's it's very important. I agree. Yeah. Social Security is such a powerful topic for anyone who's selling annuities. And then I have this this new thing that's happening where I've got people who uh, sell annuities. They also sell Medicare or maybe one person sells Medicare and one person sells annuities. And we're doing Medicare events and then they're bringing them into their practice. And naturally, they then become clients for multiple different services afterwards. So there's lots of ways that we can get there. Yeah, we've been screaming from the rooftops here on this on this podcast oh, about man. the cross selling opportunities, um, especially this past year with with the government really taking uh, taking a look at Medicare and all the rules have been changing and what you can do. And, uh, you know, we got a little bit of a reprieve. Yeah, right. <laughs> knock, knock on wood, right? <laughs> well, but uh, uh, you, you never know. The, uh, the 2026 rule is, I hear, is coming out in September. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, we're not ready we'll, today. Give us a break. I know. I, it just, I'm, we're not ready. You're 100% with you. <laughs> you ever see the meme where it's the guy sitting at a table and everything's on fire around him? He said, this is okay. Yes. You know, that's how I feel like we've been for a while, but oh, I think yeah, the fire's well, slowing well, down yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the first yeah. time I'm hearing that they're going to present the new rule in September. And we're just now absorbing the changes to the changes to the cha the final to the final to the final to the final for this year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I know. I know. It's just like, it, you know, if you remember last year, it came out right at the beginning of AEP. And I think the government um, wanted to get it out prior to AEP this year. Um, I think they wanted to get it out prior to the election. We try not to talk about the election much, but yeah, <laughs> I it's hard that, not to sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's hard not to because it, it impacts so much on uh, what we do in our industry. Right. Um, but yeah, so we're ready. I we'll, we'll see what they're coming out with, and we'll um, hopefully won't have to fight as big of a battle as we did this last year. Hopefully that one's done right, and we'll we'll just take. We're grateful for the reprieve that we got that we can have business as usual for this year anyway. Right. We'll take that for right now for today's conversation. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So, so in talking about what the agents should be doing, right. It's, it's, it's August. Um, we know we can't sell quite yet, but I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're building our funnel, right? Yep. I mean, we're, we are, we are needing to do the, we needing to do our marketing now. Yeah. Right. We're needing to do our seminars yes, <laughs> in September. So that when we can write the business, we've got our funnel filled. Is that what you're seeing? Is, is August for you guys like the biggest time of year almost? Man, I have been preaching from the hilltops for as long as anyone to listen to me to anyone who will listen to me. Like the best time is pre-AEP. Let's get those educational events. This is again for our Medicare agents now. Let's get right. those events out there, those educational events in the month of September. So this year we could do a few different topics. We can still do our traditional T65s, which we know do incredible. I mean, I was just looking at some of the results from Pinnacle agents yesterday and today, and I was amazed at the numbers we were seeing in some of what I would consider the toughest markets in the country. Um, so, I'll, and I'll touch, I'm, I'm going to come back to that one. But, you know, we right now looking at getting people in front of doing pre-AEP events, we can do T65s, we can do your average, you know, Medicare 101, which is broader to a broader audience. And then we've just now started doing content around the Inflation Reduction Act because it's in the news. It's going to continue to be in the news. And so talking in pre-AEP about the Inflation Reduction Act and how that may impact someone, we know it will impact them, but, you know, compliance wise, we're saying how that may impact you. Um, is a really important conversation. And what I've been learning from each AEP and pre-AEP season is that what the consumer wants more than anything else is unbiased information and education. They get hit so much from so many different directions with all this news, all these different things coming out their way. And they're like, well, someone please just tell me what's going on. And so... We can send them these invitations or these ads or both and invite them to a dinner out, an expensive dinner out, 
educational material. Let's talk about what's going on in Medicare right now. Do that in September. And now what they're going to do, what the consumer is going to do, is they're just going to take themselves out of the market entirely. They're going to choose that person as their agent. This is my agent. This is who I'm going to as soon as AEP and I'm able to make changes or whatever the case, this is my person. And then they just start to throw away everything else that gets sent to them. So I am a huge, huge believer in doing events in September pre-AEP being probably the most powerful time of the year to do events. That's great. No, I I completely agree with you um, that you got to get ahead of it. There is so much disruption going to happen this year. I think you're going to have a hard time with enough room space for the amount of responses you're going to get to this advertising. I just think that's just the way it's going to be. Um, you well, that's how that's how last year was. I know we had multiple agents where they had to uh, book another day because the rooms were so full that they had to extend it because they just couldn't get all the people yeah, you legally. Guys were, <laughs> in yeah, the, you in guys were crushing it last year too, yeah. but this year even more so. Overflow date after overflow date after overflow date. You know, this is, so this is what I was mentioning when I was looking yesterday, Bob, I, I'm looking at some of your agents and I looked at one in the villages in Florida um, and that was in June. The events were in June at the villages in Florida. And I think most people would think the villages is one of the toughest markets in the country, right? Everyone wants the villages. Yes. This agent mailed 3,000 invitations. They didn't do any Facebook advertising or anything else. Right smack dab in the middle of the villages. They got 107 responders. <laughs> 100 and, and, 107 in the villages. Then just, just a couple weeks ago, one of your agents in Arizona, and I'll tell you right now that I consider Arizona one of the toughest states in the country to market to. They mailed 3,700 invitations. And they had 120 something reservations wow. two weeks ago wow. in Arizona. Wow. So these wow. notoriously tough markets were already seeing these amazing amounts of reservations. And I can attribute that. What's coming clear to me is like this is they're already hearing about the disruption. Right. They already know it's so the numbers of the responses are already higher in June and July. So what's it going to look like now for August and September and even October? Yeah. Oh, those. That's amazing. Um, you're just you're not even doing some of the other types of advertising. You're getting those kind of responses in some of the toughest markets in the industry. Uh, we have we have no doubt that we're going to have great success um, this pre AEP season. That's that's phenomenal. Now, with these with the agents getting these kind of returns, so are you? You would think you would have to have at least maybe one person with you doing the meetings, right? Um, are you seeing even more than that? You know, a, you know, somebody to kind of help you manage it, help you setting appointments, you know, doing those kind of things. If you've got, you know, 30, 40, 50 people in one room, right? And you're presenting, so. Yeah, I tell everybody they need a helper. So it doesn't really matter who that secondary person is, but there should always be two people because inevitably, People are going to walk in late. And the last thing the presenter should be doing is stopping their presentation to get someone checked in, signed in, and seated to a table, right? How disruptive is that to your event? So I think there should always be at least two. So if an event holds 30, 40, I mean, if you want more, I mean, I guess that you can make a case at some point there's too many, but, you know, at least two. So one person is doing the sign-ins, the check-ins, getting people seated, taking care of them, answering any questions if they have any sort of dietary restrictions. You know, I tell people to like save the very back table. Don't sit people there for the latecomers because inevitably there's a couple latecomers and then those, those latecomers can sit at the very back table and it's the least disruptive way possible. That's a good point. Our presenter can focus on just presenting Right. Well, the last thing we want them to do is frazzle, being frazzled with all of this other stuff right before a presentation. So we want our presenter to be presenting and someone else to be supporting. Now, that someone could be, I, I know, you know, one of your reps goes out to a lot of events all over the Northeast and she's often that support person right. for, for the people who work for her Absolutely. right, or work with her. Um, so I know that your team does that a lot. But, you know, it could also be, you know, if they were partnering with that value-based care provider, it could be someone from that provider group if there was a partner involved. You know, I've seen it where it's their spouse. Actually, one of your agents often uses their spouse. The wife does the check-ins. His wife does the check-ins for him. Wow. 
And people, people love that dynamic when it's a family member, because that immediately just puts people, you know, it just, it, it takes them off guard and it, it disarms them because now it's a family business and, you know, people love family businesses. So. Yeah, no, that that's great. Yeah. That's great. Feed. That's great feedback, you know, and that, that definitely makes sense. You don't want to be the person you're up there, you're getting in your flow and you're presenting and, you know, you've got four people waiting to be checked in um, or you don't get a chance to check them in and they end up bailing on you before you even figured out who the heck they were in the room because you didn't have somebody um, assisting with the with the process there. Uh, it's it's key to have some help. Yeah, I agree. And I like that family aspect. I think that the, it kind of uh, lends warmth to the room, right? Because you, you have that family dynamic going, especially the husband and wife. You know, I think that's that's a good dynamic. Yeah. Or an adult child sometimes too. Oh, that's also a great There you go. Sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Let's back up just a little bit. Um, I know with, with the program with Leading Response, one of the things that we really like is that it's total turnkey. It's a seminar in a box. Like people don't understand, uh, I think who haven't done it before, that the registrations, you get your own dashboard. You see, you have all their information. Um, even though leading response is doing all the registrations and RSVPs and whatnot, um, you have the ability to confirm everybody, right? Even before there. And I want them to. So yeah, so we're going to do everything. We get the list, we coach and guide every single agent. Every single agent gets personal coaching and guidance from members of my team about what the best practices are, when are the best times, when are the best dates, what are the best venues. We go through we do that with every single agent to get them off so that their, their events are successful. We have the pre-designed invitations that have been vetted and tested and run through compliance. I sent you one this morning, Bob. <laughs> so <laughs> I got that, it. Yep. So we send all of those. We know that everything that we're sending is fully compliant. And so they don't have to worry about that. So they don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to work or whether or not they're doing something that, you know, saying something they should or should not say. It's all taken care of. All the inbound registrations, people can either call or they can go online, register online. All of that gets housed in our password protected website that we call Hub. And in Hub, they can do event rosters. They can check people in online. They can run reports. They export all sorts of data to their contact management system if they want to. They can manipulate their own reports, they can see a wealth of information about the prospects who are attending, as well as about their campaign's performance. So the, the information that's in Hub is just a phenomenal tool for them. And we take care of all of it. And the only thing we, what we'll tell them is like, we want to pass it back to you. And this is whether it's Medicare or financial. We want to pass it back to you at the reminder call, because we want you to be the one who makes the reminder call. And I would recommend two calls. The one is an intro and where they say, hey, Mrs. Jones, uh, this is Jen DeBure over at Leading Response. I saw you made a registration for my event coming up next week. I just wanted to thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you. And if you have any special questions that you want to make sure that I address during the presentation, please let me know and I'll make sure that I include those. That's great. Then the next one, the reminder call is, hey, Mrs. Jones, Jen DeBure again over at Leading Response. Just a reminder, friendly reminder call events tomorrow night. I've got you down for a party of two at such and such retro restaurant at six o'clock. Looking forward to meeting you. Remember, you asked me to include that question. I've got that question in my slide deck for you. We'll make sure we address it and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Uh, yeah, that's brilliant. That's no, great. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's so key to do those reminder calls and we, we try and tell the agents to make sure they're doing that, the introduction, introductory call, and then also the reminder call. It just lends itself not only to have a better attendance, but to, you've already, like you know these people. When they're coming, it's like, Mrs. Jones, it was so great talking to you. And it's, it's already a little bit more of a comfort level um, that you've built that rapport. And if your agent is too busy to do it, then their helper person can do it. Again, what if it's that family dynamic and it's the husband or wife that's being the support person? They can make those calls too. And it has the exact same power um, as if it were the actual agent. But you've got one agent who I know for a fact is so good at those intro calls that typically has appointments set prior to the event even happening. Wow. Hey, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> They're taking, taking a little bit of a... Uh 
an opportunity there when you're talking to somebody if they want to you know make that appointment right at that time right. like you, you know, got permission to contact so. yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah and now i know that we talked a little bit about the relationship with pinnacle and leading response and um we had some pretty exciting news going on this year i mean I, i'm gonna let you break all all the exciting news here but um the floor is yours go ahead we are so excited so we have entered a enterprise agreement with lead star marketplace so it is now official out to out out there. We are announcing it. <laughs> we're allowed wow. to talk about it now. All right. So we're allowed to talk about it now. Lead Star Seminars powered by Leading Response. Um, official. And with Lead Star Seminars powered by Leading Response, anyone who is an exclusive partner of Lead Star is going to get a 20% discount from us. So in addition to everything else that we offer, the discount unbelievable. 20%. Wow. So um, to put that in, in real numbers, I actually wrote them down. So for someone who's doing a 3,000 piece mailing, which is really common on our Medicare T65s in particular, um, you're looking at over $300 in savings. And if someone's doing 5,000, maybe for pre-AEP or they're doing the financial or the social security, they're looking at close to a $500 savings. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. That is such good news. Um, We're really excited. Just there's so much opportunity with this this year. We're so, uh, when I talked to you about doing this podcast the other day, I, I, I was just like, I knew it was going to be a big hit for, for the agents. Um, and I wanted to try and get it in early because I really wanted them to have time to, to get themselves going the pre-AEP season, really get marketing on this. Um, really, there's no excuse. It's a seminar in a box. Um, you're going to have great success people showing up. It's prior to AEP where you're going to be able to go out and see everybody and they're able to move. I mean, we should be crushing it this year with, yeah. with this program. I mean, not to mention, I mean, having your own portal to be able to, to go in there. I mean, I don't know too many companies that do that. So, and I know, you know, feedback from agents, our agents specifically, they love it. They yes. love your platform. It's you don't have to, to be use. total tech wizard yeah, to be yeah. able to navigate <laughs> it, which is great. It's just like very obvious what you need to do, how to download reports, how to look at your your different events. It, it's really easy to uh, to use the system, which is great. I find it funny. Like people think of like we lead with direct mail. We lead with direct mail because it performs so well. And like people think of direct mail as old school. And I'm like, you guys have absolutely no idea about the technology that is involved in our printing and the technology that's involved in Hub and like just how high tech a company we actually are. Like there is nothing old school about right. it. <laughs> well, your pieces are really nice, though. I will say that your pieces are like yeah, it's not like a stand. Yeah, it's yeah. not like a standard little mail piece. You're it's like big, bold. Like if I was a senior, I'd fill it out. Yeah, <laughs> I would go to the QR code or yeah, fill exactly. it out and I mean, make sure I was good. We have some brilliant yeah, artists I've, on our staff for sure and couldn't do it without them. I just want to keep the good news rolling because Rob and I may have mentioned that Pinnacle is going to be doing a couple of events over the next couple of months. And we are proud to announce first time to anybody... <laughs> that Jen, you're going to be out there speaking at all of our events. <laughs> Woo! There you I'm coming to each and every one. So, I'm going to be there. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be great. Our championship series, again, August 29th. We're going to be at MetLife Stadium, September 19th, Citizens Bank Park. Citizens Bank Park. Park. Philadelphia. Get to see some of the, the cool stuff in Philly. And then, of course, Nashville, September 26th. Who doesn't want to go to Nashville? Great place to go visit. I'm excited my first for Nashville. Time. I mean, I'm excited for all of them, Bob. I really am. But I'm excited for Nashville. <laughs> Nashville's going to be cool. It's absolutely going to be cool. Um, and this is a chance for all of the agents to get to not only see and hear you in person, but um, to have a, some one-on-one -on -one conversations even with you to really kind of pick your brain. I, I mean, listen, we're we're getting some, some great info here, but... Um, the experience and expertise that your team has in making these foolproof, I mean, it's like yeah. second to none, right? It doesn't matter if you've done this before or you've done a million of them. There's stuff to learn from you guys. And that's what we, the way one we feel. One of the things, I mean, and you've seen the, the, my presentation in the past, and one of the things that I dig into is the psychology behind marketing and why some marketing works so much better than others. 
And what are the principles behind that? So what we'll teach the agents at the events is the psychology behind the marketing and how that applies not just to marketing, but to business and even to your life and the why things work the way that they do. And so we talk about that and we'll definitely dig deeper um, at each of those events in the best practices specifically. I'll have a list of everything. Um, the favorite, my favorite endorsement that I ever get from anyone is when they say, call leading response, do exactly what they tell you and your events will be great. Like, and that's exactly what we want. Like, we'll tell you everything. We are so prescriptive in our approach. We'll let you know everything that we know so that you can be as successful as possible. Yeah, that's, that's what all it's all about. I, I mean, at the end of the day, um, there is so much noise out there. Uh, and this is just a way to cut through all that, um, get in front of a lot of people, uh, really get your funnel filled for AEP, but then also be able to market all year round. Uh, everybody should be really not only attending the events, of course, but reaching out to the team to making, yeah. making sure that they start having these conversations, start getting their counts together, start figuring out, you know, what days and where they're going to have these events, right? All the stuff that goes in the, the, the planning needs to go into these um, meetings uh, should all be it's happening now. Out. I know it's August, August 1st, but it's time. It's time. We got to get our, our ducks in a row, as they say. It's going to be a lot of movement this year. There's going to be a ton of movement. So I really think these in-person seminars are going to be really great because you can kind of handhold and help these people understand a lot of the crazy changes they're going to be coming up against. Yeah, 100%. And we're seeing the plans as they come out. I mean, I'm seeing drug deductibles I've never seen before. And I mean, it's it's going to be an interesting market this year. And there's going to be a lot of confusion. And, and I, w I imagine almost every single consumer out there wants help. They're going to want help and guidance navigating their way through it. And your team's there to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Jen, we, we really, I don't want to take up all of your day here. I, I, I know you had... Um, Probably a lot going on. We, we really appreciate here that you took some time for us um, really to kind of energize our agents, getting them ready. Like Jen's got go. me amped over let's here. Go. I'm ready I'm to do it. I'm ready to do a I seminar I myself. I, I know. We might have to do a, <laughs> do a seminar right here or something. Right. I, I don't know. I'm ready. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But again, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. And uh, we got a lot more to come and we're going to keep you guys busy and uh, we appreciate everything you do uh, for us and for our distribution. And uh, we're going to just keep you cranking out and uh, looking forward to the events, the uh, championship series, right? Championship, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thank you so much, Jen. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we appreciate everything you do. We'll talk soon, though. I appreciate you guys just as much. Talk soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.